Fellow classmates, who has had a dream? I think we've all had dreams. We all have a lot of dreams. Who has actually written a bucket list or has more than one dream? Can you raise your hand if you have more than one dream? In a lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> I would hope, hopefully every night. Now, the second question on that is, how many of you have actually pursued one of your dreams? Instead of just thinking about it, instead of just leaving it as a pie in the sky idea, who has actually attempted to do that? What if your dream is to go to Disney World, okay? Who has actually put in the time to make that dream a reality? Okay, a couple of you. I like to see the couple of you actually pursue your dreams. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about today, is taking that dream out of the sky and actually pursuing it. So one of the things for me that I absolutely love is Half Dome. So this is Half Dome in Yosemite. It's only about two and a half, three hours away. Most people have not gone to Yosemite, which is for me just, that's just a very exceedingly sad state of affairs because it's an amazingly beautiful place. Well, this mountain, it's called Half Dome. You can see because it's only got half a dome. It's like the other half got sheared off. So the goal on Half Dome is to get to that point right up on the top. That is only at 8,800 feet. And I say only because you could do Everest, which is like 20,000. But Half Dome is 8,800 feet. You start in the valley at 4,400 feet. So you gain over 4,400 feet on your attempt to do Half Dome. Some of you know 5,200 feet are in a mile. So that means you're actually gaining about 0.8 miles into the air. So when you look down from the top, it can be a little nerve wracking. <laughs> so how are you actually gonna get to Half Dome? How do you actually achieve your dreams? A lot of people think, well, I can, just, I can just go straight towards that dream. That's not actually how it works. Because yeah, you have that dream. You have a dream, oh, I wanna be, I wanna be a culinary expert. I wanna go to this great school in France and, and just be amazing. Well, they have requirements, you know? They have educational requirements, like you have to have a BA from somewhere else to even get into the school. They have financial requirements. So it's just the idea that you have a dream, but it's not, you're not gonna get there straight. There's gonna be stuff you have to do along the way to get there. So for, for Half Dome, first thing is you have to go up Bernal Falls. This is the very first falls you have to go around. Because even though Half Dome's way over here, you start going completely over there. So that's how you do Half Dome. Um, so you got Bernal Falls first, and then a couple miles later, you run into Nevada Falls. And you work your way up around the mountains, finally go up the side and get to the top of Half Dome. Now, Half Dome, like many other dreams, you have to start before sunrise. You have your normal time that you wake up. If you wake up at 6 normally, go to bed at 10, well, that's your normal day. Well, if you're pursuing your dreams, you wouldn't have any issues. But most likely you're not, which is why I'm trying to inspire you to pursue them. Because that, for those hours from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., that's just your normal day. There's no time, you haven't built any time in the pursue anything to pursue that dream that you really want to pursue. So you gotta build it some time somewhere. For me, it started really early. So this is my, me and my wife, actually about a decade ago, <laughs> on Mist Trail, which is the first part of Vernal, on the way to Vernal Falls. You have to, go through a lot of water because the water actually comes off in sheets off Vernal Falls and you just you just get soaked. So basically we're wearing rain jackets, garbage bags, whatever. Well the whole idea is you will get rained on as you try to reach your dreams. There's going to be steep people standing in your way, people trying to stop you from reaching your goal. No, you can't make half dome, you're too fat. No, you, you can't make it to culinary school, you can't cook. Well, people are going to stand in your way and try to pull you from that dream. You just gotta keep pursuing it. But while you're pursuing it, you have some nice accomplishments along the way. For example, again, this is Nevada Falls. Of course, this is right below the falls. And you can see, well, at least for me, it's very majestic. Because I absolutely love just watching the falls, watching them go down. It's just an amazing experience. But this is only about halfway up. So at this point, you've already been hiking for about four hours. You already gained about 2,500 feet. You were completely utterly exhausted because your physical abilities left you about an hour ago. So 
So at this point, it's all about willpower. The willpower to continue on that dream and not let anything get in your way. Because, especially in this hike, everything wants to get in your way. So this is right at the end. This is the last 300 feet. It's called the Half Dome Cables. And what it is, is about a 60% incline. So basically, you're way back. Like, you can't even walk. So what you do is you have two ropes. There's two ropes on either side. You actually hold those ropes. And you pull yourself up the mountain. You have a wooden step every 10 feet. And that's your only, it's your only saving grace. Well, unlike most dreams, don't lose your balance. Because in your fall, you'll fail. And in this case, you'll die. But what does it look like from the top? What happens when you finally get there? Well, how much when you finally reach that dream? I have no idea. It's your dream. You gotta find out what it looks like. I can't tell you what the best PB&J sandwich looks like. That's Lit's dream. He's gotta tell you what the best PB&J looks like. I can't do that. I can't do it for you. So again, there's gonna be rain along the way as you try to reach your goals. There's going to be people in your way. There's going to be times you're like, man, this sucks so bad. Can I please turn back? And sometimes, you're going to want to hurt the person who made you go on this journey. <laughs> That's my mom. She actually did want to hurt me a couple times. She had never done over a 10 mile hike in her life. And all of a sudden, I'm making her do 16 miles and climbing 4,400 feet. She actually almost made it. She got to the two mile from the top mark and she was exceedingly excited because that's the farthest she ever was gonna go. It was way farther than she ever thought her dream would take her. Sometimes though, you really need somebody to help you with your dream. Because if you try to do it alone, it's not gonna work out. You need someone to be supportive, whether, whether it be a lose weight, start that new career, get up a mountain, doesn't matter. You need to be supportive. I don't know if you guys can see from my, from my mom right here. One, one of my friends he actually had his hands on the poles and was helping my mom get back up on her feet. Because she was starting to be done. It's like, no, no, you can't be done, mom. <laughs> we gotta keep going, you, you can make this. So, just gotta, gotta work to overcome your dreams. So, your dreams are gonna take effort. So what I want you guys to do for me is if everyone could grab their cell phone and their non-dominant hand, for most people that's gonna be your left hand. Now all I want you to do is hold it out to the side. That's all I want you to do. The question here is, can you actually do that for a whole minute? For most people, it's gonna be pretty hard. A lot of us haven't held out our hand for a minute, even normally, and then you're just holding a weight. It's gonna to try to weigh you down. Things are gonna to try to weigh you down and st stop you from your dreams. But you have to not, you have to overcome them. Again, if you're not gonna overcome, you know, it's not gonna work. You have to fight for that dream. So. Do you wanna skip on your hand? I still have a timer for you. Katie's giving up, all right. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you guys can put it down if you want. Just, I just want you to get a feeling of, of putting forth that effort. Like, it's not easy just leaving your hand out there. It, it's, it's hard work. Yeah, we, <laughs> we only got a couple more seconds to see if we can pull it off. All right, so I also, I gave you a handout. It's my quit dreaming, start living handout. So you guys can turn it over if you want. And time. So the first thing you have to do is you have to look into your dreams. You know, don't just make it a dream. Make that dream a reality. You want to be an astronaut? Well, look into what it actually takes. See if you can achieve that dream and what you have to do to get there. It's not going to be knock on NASA's door. Yeah, I'd like to be an astronaut tomorrow. That doesn't work. Or I'd like to go to Disneyland tomorrow. Okay, great. 
You know, who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay? For, who's going to help you with your hotels? Who's going to do whatever? You can't just knock on Walt Disney's door and be like, "Hey, what's up? You let me in." <laughs> you know, so actually look into your dreams, and then of course, okay, and then of course you need to make a plan. You know, you got to get a plan for the dream. How are you, how are you going to reach it? And again, find a friend. Find a friend who's going to help support you in your dream. Stay away from the people who are going to detract you from your dreams. And hopefully, you'll achieve your goal. And last but not least, do it all again. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? How long does it take? So you, it's 16 miles, but obviously there's stuff in the way. So how long? You said you get up early in the morning. To get down, up and down, is it? Are you six in the morning until six at night? If you're lucky. Oh really? Yeah. Um, it actually all depends. When I did it when I was 18, I was completely and utterly unprepared. Me and my friend left at 10, got up there about two. We're out of food, out of water, and had to run all the way back down because we were afraid of being left in the mountain. Uh, the last time I did it actually took me, I think, 14 hours. So. And that's just because, if you, if you look at this, I have a great profile. Um, I put on a few pounds, so it's a lot harder. It is definitely a strenuous hike. It is not something you, you do usually on a whim, unless you're 18 and fearless. So it's just, it's, it's rough. And, and that's why it's all willpower. Because you're physically, you're physically exhausted by the first mile. It's, gonna, it's gonna be the hardest thing, one of the hardest things you've ever done. Steven? What part of the hike is the hardest? Hardest part of the hike for me is subdome, and that is right before you actually get to the cables, because there's no path. So you go, you up these steps. Which of course, you've already hiked like seven miles. The last thing you want to do is go up some steps. Like, oh crap! <laughs> and you finally make up the steps, but you're only about this wide, with no railing. And then you get subdome. Then you finish subdome, which is you have to crawl, walk, crawl about the last hundred feet up to the top of subdome. Because you actually come over from subdome, go down a little bit, and then go back to the cables. For a lot of people, it's the cables. That freaks the crap out of a lot of people. What you have to do there is don't stop. Anyone who stops at the top of subdome won't do the cables. Because you just look at it and it's like, oh my god. And, and that's, that's what you do, so you just stop. So you just gotta keep on, you just gotta keep on going. So if you think about it, you're done. So for a lot of people, that's the hardest part. I was like, how do you get down? Is there a path on the other side? No, you come down the same way you went up. Uh, usually you come down crab stop. So, you, you basically just walk it down like this. Uh, or on your arm, like, literally on your bottom. Because you don't, because if you walk, you'll be leaning so far forward. Do you they make, stop the people at the bottom to for the no. direction? Oh. No, you do a lot of communication. It's you. It's me on one step. You on another step. Hey, Linda, I'm gonna come your way. Okay. <laughs> and, and then the next year, they're like, okay, I'm gonna come down. And, and that's how you do. It. You do have to coordinate. Because again, if you fall on this thing, it's over. You're dead. But most of the time, the only people who die are the people who go on the outside of the cables. And I call them stupid, so it's a great Darwin thing for society that they're gone. Anyways, but as long as, you, long as you stay inside the cables, you're good. It's not, it's a really, really hard hike, but it's a lot of fun. And just be safe, have common sense, and you'll be fine. So I have a question. Yeah. So have you discovered that Achieving that accomplishment of half dome has somehow translated to your sense of achievement in other areas in any way? I think so. Uh, achieving half dome for me is because it is a hard hike, and more so now that I'm older. When I was 18, it was easy. You know, you're in shape, you just got out cross country, life is good, I, I could do this all day. <laughs> You know, but now that I'm older, wife and kids and all this stuff, and life is harder, like that sense of accomplishment is a lot better. Because now I, now I actually have something that I have to overcome. When I was 18, I didn't have anything to overcome. It was easy. But now I'm overcoming stuff. And the more you overcome to reach your success, the happier you are. Because like, wow, I should overcame that. 
You know, one of the things I actually absolutely love to do now is take other people in their first time. Because seeing them overcome, like me to the good time, I've been to the top five times. So it's not that big a deal, it's bigger than it used to be. But it's not as big a deal for me to get to the top. Like if I don't make it, I don't make it. But for somebody else who's doing it for the first time, to actually have them on the top of half dome, to actually have them looking down, give them a high five, like, yeah, you just made it. Like that is just the coolest experience to see the smile on their face and the exhaustion that they made it, it's, it's just an absolutely amazing experience. 